In this video, we'll look into two official documents from IBO. One is called the Physics Guide, the other one is called the Teacher Supporting Materials. Usually, I would like to refer to the web version, but then it got removed for some reason a few days ago, so I will need to refer to the PDF format, which I will put the link in the description if you want to browse it. So the page that are relevant to internal assessment is mainly on 136, page 136. So um, I will try to tell you the main point of them. So first of all is that uh, the requirements for SL and XL are exactly the same. So no matter which one you are studying, uh, the video here will be uh, useful to you and uh, the requirements and everything is exactly the same. Uh, in fact, when your school submits the IA to IBO, uh, the IBO would not even know, uh, when they mark it, would not even know you are SL or XL student. So they would just mark you uh, the same way. So it said that the student should be familiar with these three things, including the requirement of the work, which will be internally assessed, basically the reason why you are here. The second thing is about the uh, so-called animal experimentation policy, but I don't think in physics you do anything with animal anyway. So um, maybe more useful for biology. Um, the third thing is assessment criteria, which will, we will be talking about it in the next video. So as you can see here, um, the IBO said you can always ask for guidance. Uh, you should not be penalized no matter how you ask them. Of course, uh, in terms of teachers, uh, they should only give you verbal or written advice um, to improve but not edit the draft. So this is something that uh, you should anticipate. And normally, uh, as far as I know from myself as well, uh, I will only give student uh, one chance to submit the draft and I will mark it officially. Other than that, uh, I guess if you just beat them personally, uh, just to check very quickly, asking some short question, uh, it shouldn't be a problem. And once you submitted that, and that should be the final version, you cannot change anything. And that happened to uh, no matter what situation, even to, uh, for this year with the COVID-19, uh, student, whenever they submitted the IA, um, they can't change it simply, uh, no matter how important it is or um, how free they are during the school suspension. And uh, these two paragraphs is simply uh, saying the work has to be original. Uh, you cannot plagiarize anyone's work and it's just simply about that, right? So this is some sort of uh, academic honesty that you should, of course, pay attention to. Uh, no matter you're studying in IB or in university, this is extremely important. And say for my own or my school's uh, practice, I will be using some sort of web-based plagiarism detection services uh, on the website, uh, including Turnitin. And uh, this is a way which will help us to identify whether your work uh, is authentic or not. But of course, um, having detected doesn't mean you really plagiarize or the other way around. Without detecting, it doesn't mean you didn't plagiarize. So it's just a tool to help teachers to detect it. So ultimately, it's really important that you simply shouldn't be plagiarizing anything. Um, one way to do it, I guess, is to give credit uh, whenever you want to cite anyone's work and that's something you should learn for all subjects. In terms of group work, I would simply say um, try to avoid that. So uh, just imagine um, it is restricted to individual work and I think that would be simple and um, easy for everyone to handle because uh, they do encourage collaborative learning but then ultimately they want your own work so I think it's just the best to keep your own research question different from other people as for the time allocation uh, you should receive 10 hours no matter XL or SL uh, for the IA and that should include the time where uh, your, your teachers try to explain to you the requirement uh, doing the assessment and also the class time doing uh, the experiment itself and also the consultation between you and the teacher 
and also the time for reviewing. So uh, that is to say, if you think of a certain research question that is requiring so much time, then probably that is not a suitable question. Simply because you have so many other things to do in IB, so you have to manage your time well, instead of just investing all your resources, which is your time and effort into only one single IA. Here are some lab safety uh, is more about uh, useful for teachers, I would say. Um, we'll, we'll talk more about the safety ethical concern in the, in the later video. The next thing that I see is the assessment criteria, which again, we'll cover it in the next video. So I'll skip it for now. And one thing that you can see here is that it says the report should be 6 to 12 pages long. So um, I would personally suggest uh, everyone actually at the end, uh, you just be writing 12 pages, probably exactly. Um, maybe 11 pages is still all right, but usually people will just use uh, all pages limit. If you exceed the length and uh, you might be penalized, uh, in the communication criteria, although there is uh, a report later on saying that um, it is actually acceptable if you have precisely, concisely talk about uh, your own report. So not wasting any space on something that is irrelevant, having page on 16 pages is actually fine as well. But again, I would not recommend you to risk it. Okay, here is something that interesting for you. Uh, according to IBO, you could do your IA with a hands-on laboratory investigation, which is extremely common. Everyone, I mean, not everyone, but most of us will just do that. You could also use a spreadsheet for modeling or extracting data from a database. For example, people uh, may extract data from NASA to get some astronomical data and analyze them. Uh, you can also do a hybrid of them uh, with a traditional hands-on investigation. This may be useful uh, if you could find maybe a certain simulation and then you can also do the physical experiment and then you can triangulate the result. So this is something that I would also encourage you to do. And lastly, uh, they said you can also do a pure simulation uh, as long as it's interactive and open-ended. I would not strongly recommend that unless you are uh, very into simulation and you are uh, able to build the simulation in a certain sophisticated way. Uh, because if you're just choosing a certain interactive simulation from, for example, PHET, um, I don't think it is very innovative. Uh, as a research question itself. So if you really want to do that, uh, you may need to do certain uh, kind of software with uh, we call sandbox software, where you can build different things on your own. Uh, there is a software called Algodo, uh, which you can, like what I said, uh, you can build different things and you can adjust different parameters. But again, I don't think for IA, uh, you could do that, but when I supervise EE, then uh, they usually could do this if it's applicable. So as a short summary, I would just say um, strongly recommend you to stick with the traditional laboratory investigation because for that you can then show the error analysis very easily and you can show uh, different skills like plotting graph and uh, how to consider the methodology easily. The second material that I mentioned is the physics teacher supporting material. And the most important page is here under the assess student work in the overview here. So uh, you can see that this is a nice chart showing you different topics uh, where they can be categorized into hands-on practical database or simulation. So if you're interested, again, I'll put a link in the description and you should go to check it out. So uh, I will just use one of them as an example. So the second one is investigating the properties of light dependent resistor. And you can see there are different uh, files you can download. So you can download the annotated PDF uh, like this one. So this is an example of how a student did the IA before 
and I would say um, from what I remember and observe uh, the comments and also the markings are quite lenient to me if I'm the one that is marking it I probably would not be giving as high mark uh, but you can kind of see the general format of it so for example this one actually earned uh, 20 marks out of 24 which is already a level 7 grade and so you can see how uh, you can present your data uh, for each part uh, it's not the perfect piece of work but once again uh, you can grasp the idea very quickly